Some of Hong Kong's most prominent democracy campaigners have been sentenced for their roles in the 2019 anti-government protests. Media tycoon Jimmy Lai has just been handed a second jail term of eight months. He'd already received a 12-month sentence for unauthorized assembly during the demonstrations. Meanwhile, Martin Lee, who is 82 and known as Hong Kong's father of democracy, has been given an 11-month suspended sentence. Almost 1.7 million people took part in pro-democracy marches in the city back in 2019. And we have correspondent Phoebe Kong, who is standing by with The View from Hong Kong, live for us now. Phoebe, tell us, these sentences just been handed down. What more do we know? I'm now standing at a court building where uh, the judge just handed down all the sentences for 10 leading uh, figures of the opposition came. And a large group of crowd is now like chanting protest slogans, express their support to the jailed defendants. As you have mentioned in the report that uh, the Jimmy, Jimmy Lai, the media tycoon, uh, will have to go to jail for uh, more than a year, that uh, he was sentenced for two cases uh, about his role in the unauthorized assembly back in August 2019 that in total we have to, he has to serve uh, 18 months in jail just for two just for these two cases and uh, apart from that among the 10 defendants five of them were given uh, a suspended sentences that means that although the judge thinks that imprisonment is the only option but offer a suspended uh, uh, sentence for them uh, to uh, like carry on so um this is uh, the, uh, in conclusion, this is the, the sentence we uh, observed today is a little bit out of expectation, is a little bit harsher than uh, observers and analysts uh, can expect that because this is a charge of uh, not regarding the uh, national security, but rather a less serious charges among other public order charges. But still, the judge thinks that um, he, she hopes to send a deterrent to the society and to other uh, like uh, possible offenders of the similar charges charges in the future. Okay, so it, it's, it's being viewed as a signal. And just to let our viewers know, you've actually been looking at live pictures there. Um, Phoebe, I mean, we see the scenes outside of the courthouse. What has the reaction been? There's a lot going on behind you. Yes, definitely. Like just now, I'm like walking out of the courtroom right after the judge have finished her sentencing. A lot of supporters inside the courtroom uh, shouted and uh, chanted slogans uh, to support the uh, defendants. So, well, most of them have already been detained. Like they want to show support uh, before they were taken away to prison and maybe to disappear from the public eye from uh, a certain period of time. And uh, the defendants themselves. Some of them, they uh, like responded by uh, chanting slogans like uh, "peaceful rallies is not the crime." That uh, we have spoke to some of the uh, activists who have come here to attend the hearing today. They say this is uh, uh, literally a chilling effect that will impose to the society because the charges, the conviction, and the sentence we are talking about today is about the peaceful protests. That uh, it will definitely send a chilling effect to other the. The, the peaceful protesters who want to organize rallies uh, without a permission from the police. Phoebe Kong in Hong Kong. Thank you. And there are so many concerns about what these sentences mean for democracy in Hong Kong. Phoebe Kong, who we just spoke with there, who uh, she had the opportunity to speak with one defendant, the former chairman of the Hong Kong Democratic Party, about how he sees the increasing crackdown on dissent. A silver medal awarded to Yung Som by the government for his political work. It was something this former lawmaker felt proud of, but 12 years later, it seems to represent a Hong Kong that's been lost. At that time, the central government in Beijing has still uh, adopted a tolerant approach to Hong Kong. China is my country and Hong Kong is my home, but to love your country doesn't mean you love a certain political regime. Yung Sum was one of 10 defendants found guilty of organizing or attending marches in 2019 during massive anti-government protests. Many opposition icons of his generation now sentenced for the first time. 
This just the first of six charges against Jung Sum. The 73-year-old has taught at the University of Hong Kong for decades while also engaging in politics. In court, he was the only defendant to read out his submission in person. As a civil disobedience, I pled guilty, but I don't feel remorse uh, because I don't think I have done anything wrong. And uh, so I don't mitigate my case and uh, I won't go for appeal. Imprisonment won't be a surprise to me. Yung Sum calls himself a moderate who hoped for democracy under Chinese rule, but that hasn't happened. Before Hong Kong's handover from Britain to China, Yung Sum and fellow activist Martin Lee set up the Democratic Party. They were among the first lawmakers directly elected to voice dissent in the chamber and paved the way for Hong Kong's party politics. But now the national security law and an electoral overhaul are making it difficult for opposition parties to even survive. Very difficult, very depressed. They just reverse all the pace of democracy we have managed over the past 23 years. So this is a big retreat of democracy in Hong Kong. Is it worthwhile to stand for election again or maintain the party politics? I think it's a big question, or whether we go back to the pressure group politics in 1970. The fight of his generation may soon become history, but he doesn't think their efforts will have been in vain. Hong Kong history is so full of struggles, I will never disengage myself from politics, and I don't think I will leave Hong Kong at all. Democracy is not just about the party politics, not just about the voting, but also just how it affects our ways of living. But I still insist on the rational and peaceful approach. And I think this is the way to solve the problem in the long run. Yung Sum believes democratic values are now deeply rooted in Hong Kong's culture. His fight isn't over yet. And we can tell you that Yong Sum, the former chairman of the Hong Kong Democracy Party, featured in that report, has been given an eight-month suspended sentence. He is facing five additional charges. Let's speak now with Steve Sang. He is a political scientist and the director of the SOAS China Institute in London, one of the world-leading centers of expertise on China. Uh, Steve, thank you so much for joining us. What does what we have been witnessing today mean for the Hong Kong pro-democracy movement? I think it's a very sad day for Hong Kong's democracy movement. Um, that is not unexpected. I think the, um, on the stiff side sentences really have been generally expected. And it is, I think the judge was trying to do a bit of a balance between enforcing the law technically and allowing some of the uh, sentenced uh, people to have suspended sentences. But still, it is going to send a very clear message to many people in Hong Kong that peaceful demonstrations are no longer tolerated. And, I mean, we have had developments, we have to say, um, you know, since these charges were leveled, um, since this trial, and I'm thinking about the other pro-democracy cases which are now pending in the courts. Uh, for example, the nearly 50 activists that have been charged with subversion in February under the new national security law. When you look at, um, at these most recent charges, what do you think we can expect there and what does it say about the direction that Hong Kong is going in? Now, the cases that were sentenced today were charged not under the new national security law and therefore could be um, calibrated much more in terms of how the Hong Kong traditional judicial systems operate. Those new cases that are being charged under the national security law are likely to be sentenced much more harshly the whole arrangement under the national security law is such that only judges who are expected to understand what the Chinese government wants to be done under the national security law will be allowed to sit and preside over those cases. And therefore, we can expect those cases to be sentenced in very harsh ways 
against the defendants. I think the results are almost foregone conclusion. Wow, you think it's you think it's that definitive? Um, that's really incredible to hear. I'd, I'd like to also ask you, um, you know, about these efforts to have so-called only patriots in the legislative council. Um, tell us a little bit more about about what you think about that, and you know, what it means for one country, two systems. Well, it means the end of the one country, two systems, as the term was being understood in Hong Kong historically or by the rest of the world outside of China. Um, it doesn't mean it's the end of one country, two systems, as the Chinese government understands it, because the Chinese government's understanding is that whatever the Chinese government says is one country, two systems anyway. Now, in terms of the um, future of any democratic development in Hong Kong, I think we have to accept that the national security law was introduced to make sure that there is no more democracy movement in Hong Kong, that democracy in Hong Kong in the future will be democracy with the characteristics of the Chinese Communist Party, which basically means that um, every person who tries to stand will have to be vetted and being deemed as acceptable by the Communist Party or the Chinese government. And on that basis, then you can have a free um, and open election. But if you are not pre-approved by the Communist Party, mm, then there is a bit of a problem. Wow. Steve Sang, political scientist and the director of SOAS China Institute in London, thank you so much for joining us to share that expertise on what is really a historic day for Hong Kong. We appreciate your insight. You're welcome.